I'm doing well. I'm happy to have you here. I think you're super funny, and uh, Thank both you. on The Office and Silicon Valley, which was one of my favorite shows, and is now over. It is done. It, I know. As of last month. Yeah, I'm sad about that. Uh, well, we both are. <laughs> Probably you more than me because you were on it. Yeah, it was my <laughs> livelihood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's turned really dark yeah. all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> are you on that last day with the with the gang yeah. there? Did you say did you guys promised to keep in close contact and and then not? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. there's a lot of sentimental pledges that are already being violated. <laughs> <laughs> you are, oh, by the way, I yeah. do want to mention Kamel yeah. Nanjani, who's I think going to be here next week. Your co-star, your friend? Uh, yeah, I yeah. love him. He is now uh, very, very fit, very muscular. Yes. In fact, do we, yes, let's put that photograph. Now, this is not, and I'm not kidding. When I saw he posted this photograph, I thought he glued his head onto somebody else's body. <laughs> It looks like you ever been at like a local state fair and they have those, they're like wooden cutouts where it's like yeah. a body and you just like yeah. put your head on top. Yeah. It does look like that. It's weird because I'm sort of a huggy guy uh -huh. and I hug those guys all the time and hugging Kumail, it's so weird to feel somebody's body one way and then hug them. It's, it's, like, it's like if you had a teddy bear and you were used to just hugging the teddy bear and then one day that teddy bear was like replaced with like a tightly packed pack of, like, frozen hot dogs. <laughs> it's like, what's that? <laughs> his wife, his wife said something about, like, he has corners now. <laughs> Would you ever do something for a film? Would you ever get into no. what they call Kimmel shape, I guess? They, uh... <laughs> Kimmel out, yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. that. No, I would never Kimmel you out. I it. think I, I, um... I view my body as just basically a shelf for my head. Um, <laughs> and I can't, I can't, I, I'm so easily injured. I try to do inner work, though. Uh -huh. I'll work like on myself. Inner workouts? Yeah, that's right. I go to therapy and okay. uh, All right. <laughs> that's my gym. <laughs> and I, I've also just been to every kind of quack healer on the face of the planet. Oh, I was really? Just, yeah. I was oh. working in London and I went to see a shaman. I don't know if you've ever done that before. Nope, nope. Don't recommend it. No, uh, no. I lay down on this like massage table and she waved a <laughs> hawk's feather over me. My eyes were shut and then I heard a noise and I opened them and she had the hawk's feather like this and she was looking at her phone. She'd gotten a text message uh, and was checking it as she's sort of haphazardly waving the hawk's feather. And then she told me that in a past life I was an angry woman. <laughs> Yeah. That's pretty broad. Nothing more specific. I was like, can you, do you have any more information? And she was like, no, you were a woman and you were mad. <laughs> and then I went to a hypnotist. Oh, okay. Well, that, no, I just want to say about yeah. hypnotism is not, I wouldn't put that in the category no. of shamanism or whatever's going on there, right? Well, oh. I think there is a legitimate form of hypnotism. It yes. was not the form that I encountered. <laughs> okay, what form did you encounter? She did this thing where she was like, I'm going to do your hypnotism, but I'm going to do it through headphones. She had me lie down, headphones, and then she did the hypnotism through a microphone so that I could listen to it in the future and, and be right. hypnotized. Yeah. So she put on these wave sounds, and I start to feel very relaxed, and she goes, as I count down from 10, you'll feel yourself slipping deeper, deeper. And she goes, 10, 9. And then the wave sounds cut out because she had like a tech glitch on her, <laughs> on her computer, and I just heard through the heavens, she goes, oh, <laughs> she goes, <laughs> like at eight. And then she goes, she, she tinkers with it for a while, and then she goes, well, we'll fix it in post. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And did you go home and listen to it? And no. didn't have any positive effect? No, because she charged me $900. <laughs> what? I know. I didn't know that. And oh. I was too, like, ashamed of the whole thing. I was just like, take it. <laughs> <laughs> Where yeah. did you grow up? Where are you from? I'm from Yardley, Pennsylvania, which is like, yeah. There's no way. There's no way. <laughs> That's just Pennsylvania. a little collection of liars. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it's right on the Delaware River across from Trenton, New Jersey. What are they famous for? Well, just you or no. anything else? Yeah. Well, have you ever seen that famous picture of, of Washington crossing the Delaware and there's the ice, George Washington? Of course, yeah. So that happened very near to where I grew up. And every year at Christmas, it was the, on Christmas, Washington 
cross to fight the Hessians at Trenton. And every Christmas, they reenact that. Oh. Um, and it's a big deal. Oh. And uh, there's these guys, they're very stringent about the standards of like uh, historical authenticity. So I went one year, and <laughs> when you drive by, you see these guys who have been rejected because they're not authentic enough. So I, you'll see like, like all these guys who are wearing like, you know, deerskin frocks and have muskets, but they're wearing like New Balance sneakers. <laughs> and they're just like <laughs> sadly like checking their phones on the side. <laughs> And if it's too, if it's, if the river is frozen, they don't go across the river, they just carry the boat across a bridge, which I think is a little bit of a cop out. But yeah, um, if you can't accept New Balance sneakers, you certainly shouldn't be yes. dragging the boat. That's right. And because Washington is always played by an old man, I think they die fairly often or at least retire, <laughs> so they have to be replaced. I see. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And then is there, like, is it an honor that the town yes. chooses? Yeah, it's a big deal. I don't Washington? know how they choose. Yeah. I hope it's, like, a really sleazy process, like smoke-filled back rooms. And... Do you think you will ever be a part of that? Have you been a part of it? I mean, as an actor, the most prominent actor from their town, certainly you should be George In Washington, the, the father of our country. I think I'm of a more a sort of a uh, starved Abe Lincoln. Type. <laughs> but I, I, uh, I've never done a reenactment. The closest I ever did is a friend invited me to a Ren fair once, and oh. I showed up at this Ren fair. He said, we're going in garb. So I was like, I don't know what that means, but uh -huh. I think you're supposed to wear a costume. So I didn't have time, so I just gr I went to a costume shop and bought a wizard costume. <laughs> and I put it on to go to the Ren fair, but then I got lost, and I'm not a good driver, and I got in a small accident and I ended up on a traffic island and if someone had looked over they would have just seen me in a wizard outfit in a Subaru Crosstrek like rifling through my glove compartment for my insurance with like a Brene Brown audiobook blasting. <laughs> it's like a Geico commercial they cut. Yes, yeah. you're right. That's really funny. You, um, so you yeah. are on this show, this new show, Avenue 5, yeah. which is written by Armando Iannucci. Yeah. He is the creator of the show and of Veep as well. Right. Another fantastic show. Yeah, he's amazing. And I love the idea of this show, which is... Uh, yeah, the show is about... Uh, it takes place 40 years in the future, and it's about a luxury space cruise that gets knocked off course um, and very quickly civilization on the ship sort of disintegrates it's almost like a Gilligan's Island if it turned into a Lord of the Flies in space yeah so one of those shows are you a space uh, guy are you interested in that kind of stuff no I I'm, yeah. I'm not especially interested like but my father who grew up during the space race for him when he talks about space it's like he turns into a little boy He's, oh. he loves it so much and when I was little he did this thing that he, in our attic, there was this closet, and he put glow-in-the-dark stars on the roof of the closet, and then he rigged this switchboard with lights so that if you turned a switch, a light would go on, and these, there was all these lights, and then he put headphones in there um, so that w I could put on the headphones, and he would be outside with a microphone, and he would be like Mission Control, and we would play these space games, and I would just like to take this chance now on national TV um, to say, why didn't you just take me to Chuck E. Cheese? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one way of looking at it. I mean, Jimmy, they have skee-ball there. Why do I have to play in a handmade monument to his love like some sort of loser? <laughs> <laughs> My dad would have me cut hefty bags and we'd pull weeds. So consider yourself lucky. <laughs> Are you sure your dad's not a stoner? Because that sounds very stony to me. <laughs> yeah, come to think of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you might want to go through his stuff. <laughs> yeah, he talked about, too, he would also talk about, he heard about some... They were taking volunteers for a one-way mission to Mars, which is just like you head off to Mars and the expectation is you'd never come back. Yeah, right. And he was like, oh, I'd do that. What? Really? And I was like, what are you talking about? You can't just go. I don't want to, like, look at the night sky and be like, I wonder if my dad's dead yet. <laughs> well, there's a Japanese billionaire I'd like to introduce him to. <laughs> well, it's very good to see you. I can't wait to see the new show. It's called Avenue 5. It premieres Sunday night, 10 o'clock on HBO. Zach Woods, everybody. We'll be right back at Saint Motel. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. Give back this holiday season. Buy my new book, The Serious Goose. I wrote it and drew it. All the money I make goes to children's hospitals across the country. And if you don't support that, you are a monster.